Acidification of the oceans is a phenomenon that has become the evil twin of global warming. It's another CO2 problem that has a lot of negative effects on the ecosystems of our planet. In the last 300 million years we haven't seen an acidification rate this high. Besides that, the chemistry of the oceans changes faster than ever since the Great Dying. And that's all because of the extra CO2 emissions from humanity. About 30 to 40 percent of the emitted carbon dioxide is being absorbed by the oceans, rivers and lakes. The absorption causes a decrease of the pH which means acidification of the water. Increasing acidity will have harmful impacts on marine organisms and after a long time will even affect human welfare for those who rely heavily on the ocean. The table shows the change of the pH of the ocean relative since the Industrial Revolution. It shows that since the Industrial Revolution up till now, the hydrogen ion concentration is increased by 30%, which means a decrease of pH with 0.1 unit on the logarithmic scale. It is thought that in the year 2100 the pH will be further decreased to a pH of 7.824, which differs 0.3 units relative to the pH of the ocean in the Industrial Revolution. This is equivalent to an increase of hydrogen ion concentration of 126.5%. Carbon dioxide and water react according to the following equilibrium reaction, CO2 dissolved, and H2O forms H2CO3, which can react to HCO3- and H+, which in turn can form CO3-2- and 2H+. The equilibrium in the ocean can however better be described by the following reaction, CO2, CO3 2 minus, and H2O. Form 2HCO3 minus. When the carbon dioxide, CO2, concentration goes up, the carbonate, CO3 2 minus, concentration goes down almost inversely correlated. Bicarbonate, HCO3 minus, concentration goes up as well. But there's so much bicarbonate in the oceans already that the relative change is much smaller than the changes of a carbon dioxide and carbonate. Under normal circumstances, the pH of the oceans is stabilized by a mechanism called calcium carbonate compensation. This is the deposition and burial of calcium carbonate on the seafloor on the one hand, and dissolving the deposited calcium carbonate on the other. The calcium carbonate is deposited to balance the influx of calcium and carbonate ions from dissolving rocks on land. This system works so well in stabilizing the ocean's acidity that the pH has probably been around 8 for millions of years. Even when the atmospheric carbon dioxide levels were 10 times the present value. However, the current carbon dioxide rises so fast that this mechanism cannot keep up. It stabilizes over naturally occurring acidification fluctuations, which happen over thousands of years, not decades. Coral reefs built their skeletons with calcium carbonate according to the following reaction, calcium and carbonate form calcium carbonate. A steep drop in carbonate will result in this equilibrium shifting to the left, which reduces the amount of calcium carbonate, in other words, coral and shells partly dissolve. Marine life that depends on coral reefs, oyster banks or similar structures lose part of their habitat if these shrink. This way the equilibrium shift doesn't only impact creatures that directly use calcium carbonate, but also impacts life that flourishes with these creatures around. Next to that it causes reduction of metabolic rates in jumbo squids. Squid eggs need much more time to hatch when they're in an acidified ocean. Furthermore, their balance organ and that of other invertebrates can be deformed. The acidification also has a negative impact on the immune system of mussels. If mussels are exposed to an acidified environment, they will show less phagocytosis. 
Phagocytosis is a process by which a cell uses its plasma membrane to engulf a large particle, like a pathogen, to eliminate it. A fourth consequence is that it becomes more difficult for anemone fish to smell and hear their predators. The possible cause for this is the change of acoustic characteristics because of acidification. The different acoustic properties allow sound to travel further leading to a noisier ocean. This affects all marine organisms who use sound to navigate, communicate and hunt.